fair warning, this is going to be a long video. I am just starting the rough cut. I have no idea how long this is going to be, but this dining room renovation has been an ongoing saga on and off for like over a year. Summer 2020 I started this, or I was hoping to start this, and I made some progress and then it all went horribly wrong and you will see why in the video. Hi Lola. Um, so, needless to say, this is gonna be a very long video, I think. What was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh yeah, the continuity in this video is shot to absolute shit because it's taken me over a year to film it and um, I am not someone who ever stops to think about continuity. Sorry. So, I am gonna go back to editing and I am going to leave you with Summer 2020 Liv, who was a very different being. She wore a slightly smaller dress size, but she had significantly worse skin. And I remember her being very stressed. Grab a cup of tea. Make yourself comfortable. Enjoy yourself. And I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> So here's our little before of our lovely empty dining room. This is obviously before we've swapped. <laughs> Hi Maisie. This is our dining room, or this is what's going to be our dining room, I should say. Here's the view from the other end of the room. Now what I'm really looking forward to is that a couple of super exciting things have already happened about the dining room. First is I already have a dining table and chairs to go here in the middle. I got them um, locally, secondhand, um, 150 quid for a lovely um, acacia or acacia table and matching chairs. It needs a bit of an upcycle, so you'll definitely be seeing that. The other thing I'm super excited about is this nook here that this china cabinet is currently in. We are so lucky. <laughs> I'm getting a piano, <laughs> which seems like a frivolous thing that you just don't need, but it's this absolutely gorgeous antique piano that fits perfectly in that nook. And I think it'll just look amazing. It'll also be super useful for Dan because he writes a lot of his own music. So that will be going in there. I'm very excited. Then evidently here, we have a couple of things to fix. Behind that wall there, is the very, very ancient back boiler that used to be attached to the Arga or range, whatever it was that was originally used to heat this house. The problem with that is that whoever disconnected those things many, many years ago, well before we moved in, filled the whole chimney with rubble on top of the back boiler that lives just behind here. So that creates a bit of a damp issue. This is on our to-do list. It's top of my to-do list, to be honest. But until we're in a position to actually buy the house off mum, we're not in a position to fix this because this is a big job. You need to scaffold and reinforce the whole gable end in order to empty all the rubble and all the other crap that's been put in there to get the back boiler out. But it does also leak periodically from time to time. So. For some reason, the concrete, um, the hearth under here has been concreted. I don't understand why anyone would do that in a house like this. It's just madness. Um, I know. So there's concrete and, and like, what? Like why, why would you do that? Ideally, I would really like to tile down here, maybe even open this up and have a little wood burner or something similar in there. But until we actually get a contractor in to have a look at that and to see how big of a job it's gonna be all in, um, which we can't do anyway until we've got a mortgage, then basically nothing is happening here. So it's gonna be very temporary in here for that. Um, the piano is gonna go in, the table's gonna go in. I'm gonna put a lovely rug down. Look at my gorgeous floors, it's very exciting. But other than that, all I'm going to do in here is decorate. I'm just gonna paint and I'm just gonna put some artwork up and all that kind of stuff. 
I am not gonna bother doing anything too permanent um, because this is gonna turn this whole end of the house into a building site anyway, so there's no point doing anything too permanent here. But I, I can't wait for this, I'm so excited. So that's our little before of the dining room. We're a few days out from swapping. This is what it's currently looking like. It is currently the sixth. The 6th of July. We are six days away from moving. Um, hi, can you see me? We're six days away from moving. The packing has begun. There's like stuff missing from the walls and fun things like that. Um, today is very exciting because today we are having a piano delivered which is very exciting and feels very grown up um and i'm sure a week after it arrives it probably won't feel very grown up when i realize that i am but a child when it comes to musical things and i have to start all over again but needless to say we're getting a piano i've wanted a piano for years um and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be super exciting. Dan's super excited to have a piano. It's gonna really help with um, his music. He likes to write a lot of his own music and stuff, so that's gonna be really helpful for him. And it will look great in the dining room. My brother and his friend, who are very kindly going to collect it for me, left this morning fairly early and they will be back later on this evening with a piano for me which is very exciting i'm really really looking forward to it all right here we are in the dining room you can still see the sideboard still here still full <laughs> and i've got some stuff down here as well ignore that I made a silly mistake um, and obviously the the piano is still looking so pretty minus the bin of clean cat litter next to it but anyway I'm in the dining room because I'm gonna do some tidying up because tomorrow very excitingly it is Monday I have got a local guy coming round to tune and gauge the serviceability of our lovely new piano and I'm very excited because I really 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 hope that he looks at it and he says do you know what a bit of a clean and a bit of a tune and it will be absolutely golden that would be so exciting because I just I love it so much even if he doesn't say that and it's a no-go and it's unplayable it doesn't really bother me because it looks so dinky like I just oh, I just love it it's so good so like if it's a no-go, then I don't really care. I'm just gonna keep it as a beautiful piece of furniture because that's precisely what it is. I'm gonna make a start on the prep work in here for decorating because I know what I'm doing. I've got the paint. I've got the furniture, like everything that's gonna be going in this room, I already have. So I figure let's just make a start on the prep work for the decorating. Doesn't that look so pretty? Oh my goodness. Anyway, <laughs> I love this. This is original cupboard storage door, which is amazing. Um, so right now what I'm gonna do is tidy all of this up, put it temporarily elsewhere. These are rubbish here, but that is shoes. <laughs> this light fitting, Here's a fun thing that happens in old houses. I bought this beautiful chandelier um, from a lighting company that I found on Amazon. I will link it down below if anyone is interested because it was lovely and it's the perfect size and it's just absolutely gorgeous and it was only 40 quid and I got free shipping. And then the fun thing was that it's metal. The fun thing about it being metal is that this is a very old house and when it was originally wired for electricity many moons ago, earthing your light fixtures wasn't really a thing. <laughs> 
So there is one light fitting in the whole house that has an earth wire in it. None of the others do. This ceiling rose up here doesn't, the living room doesn't, the hallway doesn't, the master bedroom doesn't, and what's going to become our music room doesn't. The only light fitting in the whole house that has an earth wire is the light fitting in the guest room slash filming space which is excellent news because 10 years ago when my mum originally bought this house we got an electrician to come around and put a metal light fitting in there which is that vintage chandelier that was my nan's that I inherited but the important thing is we now know we now know now that I spent 40 quid on a chandelier that none of the light fittings that need lights are earthed and you can't put metal light fixtures in fittings that have no earth otherwise you'll get zapped every time you turn the light on <laughs> or every time you're changing a bulb or just whatever so we can't do that so if anyone wants a chandelier hit me up as you can see the room is basically empty so I figure hey let's make the most of that and let's start the decorating in the emptiest room because this is now the emptiest room the guest room is still ongoing at this point however very excitingly I have my colour I'm very excited about the colour that we're painting in here the piano is already in, that will obviously have to move in order for us to paint, but that's okay because it's on teeny tiny casters. So I can do that, no problem. Just with someone else to help me, obviously. Um, so I'm making a start with the prep work. A dining room is easy, isn't it? It's just a table in a room, so whenever you redecorate, it's really easy to get through everything. The big project in here is of course the fireplace or what is now a fake fireplace because the real fireplace was blocked up this is our dining room fireplace which i love and is such a gorgeous mantelpiece to have obviously as you can tell someone did the most disgusting job of concreting that hearth back in the day and we have some moisture coming in from somewhere that is creating a damp problem here which is why this plasterboard here doesn't match the actual colour of the room because this got very wet so we had to replace it and we just did a super simple patch job because we couldn't really think of what else to do so this is a big big job that I will obviously have to deal with first before I can decorate in here however I don't know exactly what needs to be done to fix this problem and stop it coming back. So it is very much get a professional in to have a look at it. So I have got um, a lovely local builder coming around later on today at some point. He's just gonna pop in on his way past very kindly and he is going to tell me if it, if it needs permanent fixing now, then I haven't wasted any time or money or effort in decorating. So we can do that and then we'll decorate. If it needs, or if we can get away with just a temporary fix until some big work can happen here, then that's what I'll go with because I would really like to be able to decorate in here. So just had the build around to look at the fireplace. Somewhat better than I thought. I was really worried he was gonna look at it and be like, cost 10 grand, love, like, gotta get it fixed, gotta get it fixed. And instead, we're looking at a good few hundred quid. Oh. Which is really good. It's like, don't get me wrong, that's like just super cheap work. And like, I know it'll be amazing. Like, the, you know, this guy and the guy he uses, they're really, really good at what they do. And it's worth every penny and more so, in my opinion. But then it's also like, oh God. So I was like, right, just tell me straight, can I decorate or not? And he was like, nah, <laughs> I wouldn't bother. 
So I don't even know what time it was this afternoon that I started filming the first bit of this vlog, but I was super excited to get our dining room done. It's not happening. I'm really sad. Many months later. This is very exciting. It is time. We are back. I don't even, I can't even remember when the last time was that I filmed anything for the dining room. However, it's been a minute, but that's okay because today we are making a start on the dining room. It has been a year, I think, roughly, since I last filmed anything to do with the dining room. But anyway, that is immaterial. What is material is that, hopefully, fingers crossed, and people being sensible, will hopefully occur and that will mean that hopefully Christmas we will have family up. It's been almost two years since I've seen my brother and his girlfriend and I'm looking forward to a nice big family Christmas. However, this will be the first big family Christmas, hopefully, <laughs> that we will be hosting because we're in the big house now. So usually my mum hosts, uh, but obviously since swapping it's now my job to plan and organize and create Christmas. So I need a functioning dining room. So that is why I've got about five or six months, which sounds like a really long time, but it's really not because we've still got building work to do in here. However, while I wait endlessly for people to show up and give quotes and do the work and whatever else, I'm gonna start upcycling the furniture. Once all the furniture upcycling is done that I want to do in here, I will then move on to decorating the walls that don't need building work. Because I can see what will happen. I won't be able to get the building work done before Christmas. And then I'll have a bloody ugly dining room for the first family Christmas in two years. I don't want to be that person. I want a relatively nice dining room for our Christmas dinner. So I am going to kill my cat. I am planning on just steaming ahead as if this wall next to me is not happening. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea, but anyway, I'm gonna do it. So I might end up with three beautifully decorated walls and lots of lovely looking furniture and then just a massive hole. But that's okay, whatever, doesn't matter. So we're starting with the dining table today. This is our dining table, which I love. Got it on Facebook Marketplace. Ignore this. Pretend that's not happening. Anyway, so dining table, I really love it. It's a really nice wood. So the plan for today is to start varnishing the top of the table and then at some point during next week, I will paint the legs, which are going to be black. And then that's my next upcycle project. So ignore that as well. Anyway. Let's get going. We are dry, I'm excited. I can't wait to do this, this is gonna be good. So, so we are back to this stuff again. I figured this might be a good option for the table as well. This is the same stuff that I used on the shelf for the guest room. Lola, will you stop? Go on, go away. Um, and it's really good and it makes a lovely, Tiny finish, so I'm excited for this. I think this will be good. Let me get my little paint stick and my very technical tin opener. Tin opener? I don't know, anyway. Hee I love it. Is this even gonna fit? Oh my God, it doesn't fit. <laughs> right. Oh, 
Okay, now I have a brush that will actually fit. So count number one is done. Looks amazing. I, I think it, it doesn't look any different particularly, to be honest. I need to fix those legs. Look how feckin' wonky they are. <laughs> um, but when it's all when all the legs are painted black and everything, it's gonna look really, really slick. I'm super excited. And I just love the colour that it is with the with the varnish. Like it's so rich and warm. Hey there, I'm too lazy to change the angle. So here we go. I've just done coat number two of the varnish. Looks really good. So while that dries, I'm gonna start painting the legs. And I went for this. Yes, it is exterior satin finish paint. But that's because I really want it to be durable because this table is old and it's gonna take a bit of a kicking. I've got a cat, at some point there will be other pets people. I don't know. Maybe a rogue bird that flies down the chimney. Not really sure. So anyway, that is what I'm doing. I'm going to start painting the legs and then it can all dry together because the black paint has a recoat time of one hour, which is perfect. I've got six hours. I should probably set a timer for the varnish. Right, oh my god, I love it. I bloody love it. Ooh, look how pretty she is. A queen, an icon with a wobbly leg, but I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. Oh my god, look how shiny that is. Oh, 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 hi, there's my reflection. so mad at me and I haven't even done anything wrong yet today. It's like the beginning of September um, and a lot has happened since I last checked in for dining room reno. So for a start, we have completely upended the dining room and pushed everything as close to this damaged wall as we possibly can. I totally bust my dungarees that I always wear for renovating, that like my coveralls. In the interest of protecting my clothing, I have pinched a boiler suit from my brother. 
because unsurprisingly Dan's wouldn't fit me, he's too skinny. I've got, I, I like, I am packing so, so much <sighs> metaphorical junk. in my metaphorical trunk. <laughs> so what I've had to do is borrow one from my brother. But my brother is an absolute giant of a man. He's like really, really tall. And to say that it feels like I'm a five-year-old raiding her dad's clothing is... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I look like I've shat myself. I have a full range of motion and I'm so comfortable. Let's go to the shed to get goodies that we will need for today because we're doing some really exciting stuff today. I love this lighting. That's nice, isn't it? So there's some big work that needs to happen in the dining room, obviously, as you know, because I have definitely already explained it at some point in this video so far. Hey there, future Liv, just dropping in to say that I have not actually explained what the hell happened with the wall. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do it very quickly now, so super quick. We had someone come out and have a look at the wall in the dining room and they told us that it wasn't necessarily the chimney, but to cap that anyway, so that is exactly what we did. But there's a chance that it's actually the harling on the outside of the wall, which is bossed. And when that happens and it lifts away from the surface of the wall, moisture can get back there and then eventually it just kind of accumulates, works its way through the stone of the house, and then it's working its way down the rubble of the chimney. So that is actually what the problem is. We also briefly thought it was the roof. Um, so we've had the roof patched as well because there were a couple of points that were letting a little bit of water in. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I haven't explained it at all so far in this video, but now I have. The wall that is damaged on the outside, there isn't really anything we can do about that currently because everyone is far too busy to get it fixed before Christmas. So instead, what we are planning on doing is a bit of a temporary fix for the outside of the wall. And we're just gonna go ahead and do the work on the inside because although that's not ideal, um, it will give us doing a temporary fix on the wall outside just to see us through the winter and then the guy that we found said that he could come maybe in March. So that's really only a few months away, that's not too bad. So I'm gonna make a start this week on painting because then by the time everything is delivered, the paint will have cured and Dan will be able to make a start on ripping that plasterboard down and reframing that wall and everything like that. And I know that's an ass about face way of doing it. I do know that you should do the messy work first, but then I also know that it's already almost the middle of September, we've got family coming for Christmas and I have nowhere to feed them. Uh, not to mention the fact that because of the damage to the outside wall, the inside wall is completely wrecked and it's really wet and damp and, and we don't want that and we need time for it to dry out before all the reframing and everything can happen. So anyway, I am very aware before anyone jumps into the comments and mansplains how building and decorating works, I do know that we're doing it the wrong way around, but I also know that we're running out of time and this is the most time efficient way of doing it because we've got to wait for the materials to arrive before we can do the work anyway. So I'm just gonna do what I can and then we'll just fudge it and it'll be fine. I absolutely guarantee it'll still look great it'll still be great. Where are all the fucking roller trays? So I'm starting with this little alcove and then I'm going to work my way round this way until eventually we come <laughs> to this corner here, obviously.
End of day one. This is as far as we have got. And I've got the alcove where the the alcove where the piano lives behind me all done as well. This is just one coat. I'm gonna see what it looks like in the daylight because it might be possible for me to get away with just one coat. I'm not 100% sure. Good morning. Oh, I love this moody lighting. Also, you're like covered in dust. So anyway, good morning. It's not really morning, it's actually the afternoon because I'm a lazy bitch. Um, so today we are doing a second coat, which I'm not gonna bother filming because it's just gonna take forever anyway. Um, and you've already seen it. You know the joy that is this dark abyss behind me. Oh, I love to see it. But let me show you what it looks like in the daylight so that you can actually get an idea of it. Oh, oh, it's tasty, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely, that. Oh, I really like it. Here I go with that quote from the holiday again. I really like it. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but if not, then surprise, I am cladding the inside of the window bay. We're gonna do V-lining and that's gonna be painted white to match the rest of the woodwork, just to help bounce the light around because it is a dark color and I'm conscious that this room is gonna need some extra help lighting it. Um, so we are V-lining the window bay, which is super exciting. It's gonna look essentially like, um, like faux shutters almost when it's done. So I'm really excited about that. I think that'll look really cute. Hi, I'm super busy with work, but I'm just dropping in to say, very excitingly, that um, Dan is off at the moment. He's on his his leave. Um, don't know why I said it like that. And he is currently measuring up a window for V-lining. So, very, very quickly, just to give you a little before shot, mind the laundry. This is what we're currently working with. and it is all gonna be clad. So like all of this is gonna be clad. The top bit is gonna be clad. So it will essentially, um, and then it will all be white satin wood so that the light reflects because it's a north facing room. So here's a little update. V-lining has been installed behind the radiator, so it just needs one more coat of paint, and that'd be nice. And we've got the whole rest of the window bay still to do, so Dan's just out. Oh my God, I just nearly fell right over in a tin of paint. Wouldn't that be bloody hilarious? Um, so Dan's just out doing um, sanding for the top section, and then we get to do the sides, and it's super exciting. And meanwhile, while he does that, I am um, painting woodwork. <laughs> yeah, team, he says, as I stand here and do nothing. Eee, so cute. Oh, that's gonna look awesome. Doing great work, honey. I appreciate you. <laughs> Lol. It looks so cute. Right, so here we go. Our window bay is fully clad. We even did behind the radiator which I just think helps make it look really nice and finished. So this is, you literally like can't even really see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the wood color and texture kind of bleeding through a wee bit. Um, this is one coat of satin wood because I do all my woodwork in satin wood. 
So I'm just gonna let this dry. I've done all the windowsill and around the immediate of the window. Um, but now if I stand back, look at the mess. <gasps> oh, it looks like students live here. I swear it's disgusting. But you can kind of see what we're going for now. Roughly. <laughs> Obviously ignore this unfinished bit. We still haven't got, it's been a week, we still haven't got any further than that. Please excuse the sound of the dehumidifier, but I need to have this on so that I can do what needs to be done. This is where we're up to on the damaged. This is the old back boiler in here that was disconnected and then was left. The chimney all above it has just been filled with rubble. So we have now capped the chimney, but everything that Dan has cut away here and this top section is also gonna be cut off is like wet basically, or was wet. It's dried out a lot because we've had the dehumidifier in that running. There's also a socket down there on the floor that was in this wall that is going away because we don't want a socket there. Um, I'm sure I've probably already said this and shown you all of this, but anyway, that is what we're working with behind the wall. So all of this is to be reframed and then moisture resistant plasterboard put in and then and only then can we paint this remaining section of wall. So that is what is happening today. So I will do another update a bit later on. I don't really want to get in Dan's way while he's working on it. So that is why that is why I'm not actually filming this process. Um, I just want it to be done. And then I will update you as and when he's out of the way. Okay, so I just came outside because I've literally just got back from the supermarket to find that my Entire dining room and kitchen is like full of plaster dust. <laughs> I got super busy with work, so it's not me that's doing a lot of the work on the dining room, which is why you're not seeing a huge amount of it, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but Dan has very kindly been doing a lot of the work for me, which is great, until he forgets to attach the hoover, and does a whole load of sanding, I literally thought the kitchen was on fire. I came through the door and there was just a cloud. It was like smoke. And I honestly thought the fucking house was on fire. Um, and it turns out it's just Dan who forgot to attach the hoover. So, so that's fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how well it's going now. Now that I've opened the doors and windows. Okay, it's actually clear, which is something. Dusty. At least he remembered the Hoover now. So, I had plans. That should be a little bit quieter at least. You might at least be able to hear me. I had plans to sit and, oh, oh hi, hi, I'm here, I'm here, hello. Uh, so I did have big plans this afternoon. I've just finished some jobs and I went and did my house clean and I had every intention of spending this afternoon on the couch writing. I was super excited about the idea, but now, Can you even see that? Because it's white and I am also white. Shock horror. Now I have to clean my entire kitchen, including the grill. Because it was open. <laughs> so 
So that's a thing. Now, bless him. He's my absolute favorite human on the planet and I don't know what I would do without him. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think my life would be so much emptier and so much sadder and considerably less fun. But there also wouldn't be plaster dust in my fucking kitchen. Good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> Definitely afternoon. Right, today we've got some big news. Wow, bright, uh, so white, so very white. Um, so, this is what's happening today. We are taping off this wall, ready for the grey to go on and then we can do the last little bit of woodwork which is just this bit here, the skirting which is new anyway and this door frame over here and then we can be finished with the grey and I'm so super stoked, it's going to look amazing, I'm excited to get it finished. This next section is really really long and overly convoluted so I'm just going to do it as voiceover just to make it a little bit easier. So Dan finished up the painting, you can see that here. While he was doing that I was working on this which is our sideboard. We wanted to make it very mid-century modern. I, I think at some point <laughs> I've mentioned this, I don't know, if I haven't then there'll be a, an inspo picture right here. Um, but yeah, we wanted to, to make it mid-century modern, slatted, white, kind of credenza, credenza style. Um, so that is what we're doing. The edges were beveled, so what we did was we cut this piece of plywood and then made it like overhang the bevel ever so slightly. And then we glued that down and the plan was, and it actually worked out surprisingly well, so the plan was to then fill in the gap created by the bevel, which you'll see just here in a minute. Um, so we obviously glued the plywood down, weighted it down, clamps, weights, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then once it was dry, we were able to go in with some wood filler and push it into the gap where the bevel was to make it a flush like flat angle instead around the edge so i found this really satisfying to do i really enjoyed it so if anyone needs any beveled edges filling <laughs> hit me up because uh it's your girl's new favorite thing so yeah i just mixed some wood filler and i just pushed it straight in there and tried to get it as smooth as possible with as few bubbles as possible I'm not great with stuff like this, so there are a few bubbles, but to be honest, when you're looking at the sideboard as a whole or as part of the room, you really can't tell that it's not perfect. You have to be looking at it pretty close up to realize that it's a bit janky. <laughs> so I think it's fine. Then came the very long two day process because I'm rubbish with a circular saw of cutting the slats. So this is two centimeter wide strip wood. It's two and a half meters in length per piece I guess and I just measured out the height that I needed them marked it all out cut it all down with a circular saw I did have don't panic everyone I got a supervised tutorial from Dan the man uh, to make sure that I wouldn't like cut my fingers off and then and then he went to work <laughs> and then I was left for the day to do all the cutting myself we also worked out the math slightly incorrectly 
we had figured out that we needed 11 slats per door on the sideboard. That actually ended up not being the case. I don't know what happened there still to this day. It's a mystery. But it uh, it turned out we only needed 10. So I, I had 11 slats left over, which I really didn't need. But you know what? They'll make good paint sticks, so whatever. Then I sanded the sideboard down, <laughs> obviously, as you can see. So then I used one of the slats that I'd cut to make sure that my measurements were right and I just measured it out. This was really awkward doing it while the doors were still attached. So in the end, what I ended up doing was actually taking all the doors off and measuring it out that way. If I could put the door on a flat surface, it was way easier to deal with. So you'll see that that's what I did. Here I am marking up one of the other doors and I just used pencil and I just marked alternate channels um, to make it obvious for myself uh, where they needed to go. Obviously, because I took the handles out, you can see there that I had to fill holes in. Uh, so we did that. But yeah, then it was just a, a mission to stick them all down. This took me... I'm going to say it took me four days from the first slat on the first door to the last one. It probably took me about four days because I, I was having to wait... Um, I can't remember what the the minimum curing time is for that wood, but I was leaving them at least overnight so that it was really, really strong and well, like, well stuck down. Um, and I was also, you can see here, I'm using a set square, speed square. I think it's a speed square to make sure that they were all perpendicular uh, to the edges of the door and making sure they were all beautifully lined up. And it was such a ball ache. Then we've got two drawers in the sideboard, which obviously I also wanted to be slatted and I wanted them to line up so I put the door back on and then used the off cuts of that to mark up where the door should be and I numbered each individual slat so that it matched with the slat that I'd cut it off of if that makes sense um, and then I was just able to just go along and stick those down on the drawers and here it is unpainted but finished and it was so satisfying it was such a great day when I did this it was an absolute highlight I think I still think it looks awesome. Every time I look at it, I'm like, oh my god, this looks fucking great. But obviously now comes the task of painting. So I taped off the inside because I'm a lazy bugger and I really could not be fucked painting the whole inside of the sideboard for the number of times you're actually going to see the inside of the cupboards. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I've got better things to do. Do you know what I mean? Here was actually, I'm going to freeze frame here because I'm like watching this as I record this. So you can see here, you can kind of see it quite well. I hope you can see it anyway on whatever device you're watching it on. There's yellow patches coming through the first coat of satin wood. As far as I can tell, that is the, uh, the tannin in whatever color treatment was used on the veneer of the sideboard bleeding through. And I spent so long online trying to figure out how the fuck to fix this. It was honestly driving me nuts. I did some research and I discovered a product called Zinsa. Oh shit, what was it called? Zinsa uh, Primer, Sealer and Stain Blocker, I think it was called. It will be linked in the description anyway. It's really thin and it didn't look as if it was blocking the stain when I painted it on. Here I am painting it on. It didn't look like it worked, but I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do a second coat of satin wood. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Thank the Lord. It actually did work and it didn't bleed through the second coat. So I was able to bang out a second coat on every single door and the main body of the sideboard. Um, and it brilliant white, exactly what I wanted. So I honestly couldn't be any happier with it. I think it turned out really, really well. And then all we had to do, obviously we've got Foreman Lola making sure that I'm okay and that I'm not using the tools dangerously. All we had to do is just stick the doors back on, stick the drawers in and uh, make sure everything lined up beautifully, which took a little bit of finagling. You can see here we're kind of fiddling a wee bit, um, getting the screw tension correct so that the doors hung properly. And uh, and that's that. And now back to past Liv so that she can actually wrap up this goddamn saga. Good morning. Good morning, Lola. Good morning. Say hi. You're the worst. Hi. Right. So, it's very exciting today. Well, kind of exciting today because 
the sideboard is finished. It is complete. It is dry. Which means I get the fun task of tidying everything up, giving everything a really good clean. Nah, because it'd be dusty. Don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Go on then, do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> good job. So that's what we're doing. We're cleaning, we're tidying, we're... <laughs> wrestling with this beast and then we're going to start making things look pretty. now. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. It's fucking done. Um, happy new year if you made it this far. If you did, fucking hats off because I bet editing Liv didn't. It's done. It's a saga and it took way fucking longer than it was meant to. Uh, but you have to admit, the void behind me is a fucking vibe. So we'll just run with it. It doesn't matter how long it took. The fact is, I got there in the end. <laughs> we have a finished dining room. Christmas was very successful in our shiny new dining room and I am very pleased with the outcome. I'm also extra pleased that I managed to find somewhere 
for my stag skull, which I have had for many, many years and have never had anywhere to hang it. So I'm really stoked that I was able to find somewhere to put it. So there we go, that is our dining room renovation. It's finally done. Now we get to move on to the smaller but much more detailed projects which I'm excited to share with you guys. Hopefully there will be more than one in 2022. I'm off to a hot start because this is 2022 already. So, thanks very much for watching. It's a, it's a long video if you got this far. Also, if you just scrubbed through to see the end result, like, that's fine too. I'm really, I'm not mad about it. But yeah, there we go. Job done, on to the next. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Hit that ring bell button to be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you guys next month. Bye-bye. <gasps>